Hey everybody, Andy here. Happy Thursday, live office hours, great to have you. Today I've got a nice little show for you on what's going on with the employment market right now and uh, why I think it's on fire, what it means to you. I'm gonna show you some evidence of the fact and I'm gonna tell you what I want you to do about it so you get those big time job offers and pay raises. So great to have you if you're here with me live. Uh, it's, it's a Thursday at 11 a.m. Central. Every week I have my show. And uh, thanks for joining me. If you are here, get in the chat, say hi, let me know who you are, where you're from, what you do, what you need, put some question marks in front of your questions. And if you're watching me on the recording, great to have you as well. So today I was gonna show up and I was just gonna do a Q&A, but I, uh, after I went through my morning routine, I, I went through my email, which is normally what I do. I got an email from Michael, who I don't know. I'm actually going to show you his email here in a little while. And uh, he was asking me about uh, an opportunity. He's in New York. There's an opportunity in Tennessee. He got a job offer. He thought the employer put it together uh, in, a bit, in a bit hurried fashion. And he thinks it's about 20K light. And he wanted my advice. And so I said, okay, that's... This is just the last straw. I get emails like this every day. I get comments in the Mile Walk Academy system every day. I get emails of victory dances of people in my programs that are getting these huge raises. And I thought, I want to I wanna take uh, another uh, layer off the onion here and take a little bit deeper dive into showing you what's actually happening in the employment market right now, why that's happening, and, uh, and what it could mean for you. So... What's actually happening? Why is the employment market uh, so hot right now? Now, I'm gonna say this, but I don't wanna have to say this every time I make a positive statement like that. Yes, every single day for all time, somebody zigs and somebody zags, right? I understand there are parts of the world that are not in as great shape. I understand there are certain industries that are not doing as well as others. But for the most part, the employment market, the economy was strolling right along. It was very healthy. When, when the pandemic hit, employers were very disoriented. Uh, certainly some of them uh, took, took some real shots in the, in the mouth and, and are still recovering. But for the most part, things were, going, things were going very well. So they were disoriented and needed to figure out how to operate in this new world that we were facing uh, for the immediate future, which, and, and which still seems to be, to be lingering. And so certainly there were a lot of let goes. There were a lot of stalls. There were a lot of, of, of employers that just were trying to figure themselves out, figure out how to work remotely, figure out how to adjust their processes, look at ways to optimize costs and those kinds of things. They've long figured that out. Now we're strolling along. And what's happened is a lot of the employees, you've got batches of employees who do not like the way their organizations were operating as a result of the pandemic. They want to leave their companies. You have have the normal course of turnover, which happens every day for all time and for always will, is that through the natural course of work, employees just want to leave their employers for whatever reasons. Uh, maybe they've outgrown their jobs. Maybe they have they've found a better job. Maybe they want to make a career change, whatever it might be. Those employees actually didn't change uh, or turn over as frequently as they might have during the last year, simply because of the uncertainty in the market. So what you what you have now is this is this max ex, mass exodus of of employees, or really just higher higher turnover than you would normally have. And because the market was healthy to begin with, and employers are growing, you have this combination, this perfect storm of employers are growing. They're trying to hire new people because of that growth. But what's also happening is that employees are leaving, in which case employers need to replenish those positions as well. So you have the combination of needing to replenish and wanting more positions filled because of growth. And so you have this huge gap, which basically means employers are now overpaying to get anybody hired. Now, you don't need to go too far, like anecdotally, just to see where where this is occurring. I mean, I go out to my favorite lunch spots, uh, you know, a couple times a week. There's signs in the windows in these restaurants. Hiring will give servers sign-on bonuses: seven hundred dollars, nine hundred dollars, thousand fifty dollars. I can't believe this. Uh, my, my wife, she wants wants to go to the spot, 
right? They, 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 the, the therapists, the massage therapists, the, the estheticians, and those folks that were working at the spa before the pandemic hit, then, were, then it was shut down for a while. A lot of them haven't returned to work for various reasons. They found other jobs or uh, at least in the United States, where we, we are, I, th I think, fairly generous with unemployment benefits that keep getting extended and extended. And I know I can say this with a straight face to this group and not worrying about any, how anybody takes is while our government with a great heart uh, provides people these benefits, what also happens is economically uh, it might not be so sound as it lingers because a lot of these people that are collecting uh, unemployment benefits are not willing to get up off the couch to go back to their their serving job, hosting job, whatever it might be, any job. And so they're just not motivated or incented. That's what the, that's what the business owners are telling me, but that's what I I assume to be true. So so a lot of for a lot of reasons uh, this is occurring, and there are a lot of job openings right now. And so one thing I want to show you uh, what's actually happening is I am not much of a news watcher when it comes to understanding trends in the market. I tend to like to look at at different sites and, and triangulate and, and, and make my own make my own interpretation, have my own opinions. But there's 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 U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics reports that I look at that tell me what unemployment looks like, what 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 turnover looks like, what the job openings look like, in, in all these different trends, what market pay what market pays look like, inflation looks like, all these things that affect employment, the housing market, and so on. And while I appreciate that these statistics uh, are only so valid because of a number of reasons, I want to show you something uh, from one of the sites that I look at. And while I realize this is only a U.S.-based uh, uh, piece of information, this is the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. They, they, this is where I tend to see a lot of insight related to the employment market. This thing that you're looking at right now is called a JOLTS report. It's a, the job openings in combination with, with labor turnover. And you can see this graph. This graph goes back 10 years. That I extracted this this morning at, at what, about 8 o'clock uh, my time. And you can see this trend is over time. It's it's looking really good. And you can see this huge dip right here. Well, that that's COVID hitting and a lot of people getting knocked out of work. But look at this right here. This this number, if you want to see the detail of that number, if you look at the chart below, this is this is 11 million. That's 10 with a whole bunch of zeros after it. This is how many jobs are open in the United States right now. Now, I was telling you, sure, there's some servers who, or, or any other profession for that matter, not picking on servers at all, uh, that aren't returning to work uh, as quickly as they might. This is only insight that is actually reported by employers. I also have told you in the past that not all job openings are published sized or advertised or, 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 or given back on these surveys back to governmental agencies and things of that nature. But you get the idea. Um, back, If you look back to February and March, this 80, 82, 88 number down here, if you can see it. I mean, these, these months right here, that's five straight months of records of since the beginning of time, since these numbers were ever captured, this is how many job openings five months in a row we've set records through, I guess I should say, you know, March through March through July. July's number's preliminary, but it's probably pretty close. We've set records every month for open jobs. So I know some of you are out there already celebrating your new jobs and you're sending me your 30 and 50 and 70 and 80 and $100,000 pay increases and, and I like to think we had something to do with that, right? You worked the process, you did the right things, but you also have the wind at your back. And so I want you guys to know you have the wind at your back. And it's important that you know you have the wind at your back because it should, it should give you caution. And I don't want you to be hasty in the way in which you approach interviewing and, and job offers in particular. So I wanted you to see this insight. This is what we're dealing with. And while I realize that this is only uh, the the United States. 
I need you to know this is what's happening right now. And so each week when you come and you see these nice people in the chat, uh, we wish them congratulations on their big time job offers or maybe even in some emails that I've sent you over the past month with people who are getting these gigantic pay increases or, or job offers uh, where, their, where their pay is going way up, even if they're coming from an unemployed status. This is why this is happening. You, you're, you're in the midst of a perfect, you're in the midst of a perfect storm. So um, the folks, those of you that are staying put with your employers, you should be thinking about your pay raises because what's also happening is your pay has probably not been increased in a little while. And you're going to have your employer who's going to be overpaying to get new people into your organization. And what, what, this always happens. This happens a lot, especially when we have these big gyrations in our cycles like I just showed you in that graph, is employers are overpaying for those new people. So somebody who's coming into your organization who probably doesn't even have as great a skills as you do, who, who doesn't certainly have the employer know-how, the product or service know-how, the internal processes know-how, and all that other stuff is likely going to be getting paid more than you are. Now, if you're a new employee going into a new organization, well, good for you. But I need you to understand this is what's happening right now. It's actually been happening for months, many months. It's just that, that it hasn't been as noticeable. And I could see that trend way back four months ago. I was telling you about it four months ago, but, but I don't know if everybody was hearing me. So anyway, I wanted to, make, I wanted to be really explicit. And so, so this is a micro, I'm going to show you a microcosm of, 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 of what I see a lot of, of uh, employers doing. Now, I don't know if you guys know this, uh, but if you have recently downloaded something from me and you are new to my community or new to my newsletter digest, uh, I think we get about two to 300 people a day, day in, day out, that find me new, that sign up for the newsletter. Every single one of them gets an email. It says, welcome and more resources. That email says, hey, thanks for joining me. I'm Andy. Here's what I'm about. Here's some other stuff you should check out that's nice and free. Stop by Thursday for live office hours. Tell me about you. What problems are you facing? Well, a lot of you laugh those off because I only get so many responses from that email, but I read all of them every day. Okay, every single day as part, there's a little item on my calendar that says read your email. And in the, in, the, in the read your email, I read the support queue too. These emails come in. This one came in this morning. I read it and here's what it said. Michael, who I don't know, whose name I whited out, is he says, I've been offered a position. I was, look, I was looking on YouTube, I get that one a lot, right, from different content about compensation, right, or for whatever reason, and I've been offered a position. The work is in Tennessee, I live in upstate New York. Now, I previously worked with these people. So he, these are people he knows. So I did not apply or formally interview. This is happening a lot, right? Friends are pulling in friends. The position's full-time in Tennessee. This is gonna cause his expenses to go up. He says he feels the compensation is short, $20,000 based on his experience and education. He, he is basically saying, I'm not sure what to do, but I'm going to be prudent and I'm going to go visit the site basically to get more information. Andy, do you ha basically, do you have any suggestions? And so, well, well, these are my suggestions to him, but also we're going to have Kara send him a message that says, hey, Andy, made you famous in live office hours today. Go check out what he said. But I respond to a lot of these, not all of them, because it's just I, I don't have enough time to, but I read them to see what's happening. And I'm getting a lot of these. I'm getting a lot of, hey, thank you so much, I got a new job, but hey, uh, I got an offer, I'm not sure if it's, if, it's, if it's high enough. So, couple things. I know some of you are out there like, Andy, well, hey, this is great news, but I'm having a dickens of a time trying to find my, find my job. Well, everybody's a little different. Depends who you are, depends where you live, depends how you're targeting uh, the organizations, it depends how much effort you're putting in, it depends if it's the right effort, and so on. So a couple things really quick in general, and then I want to, I just want to say a few more things here to Michael, is number one, if you, with this being the case, wherever you live in the world, number one, you should be sending out messages like crazy. I'm not talking about applying online. 
Okay, it's actually hard, even though there are a lot of openings in employers, for them to actually farm the applicant trashing system. So, so don't spend a lot of time putting your resumes into the ATS. I want you to focus on my job search challenge techniques. If you're in my premium coaching program, you have a six video detailed templates and all that good stuff, job search challenge. If you're not in that in the job search coaching program or you're not one of my boot campers, I have a, a, a two part free playlist that's on my YouTube channel. I would check that out and I would make sure I'm being really consistent with sending out the messages. The second thing that I would be doing is I would be making sure from an interviewing standpoint that I'm investigating them every bit as much as they're investigating me. And I obviously I want you to be all buttoned up. I've got an interview playlist that's out there. You can grab the you can grab the interview intervention book if that's still in the shot. I don't know if you can see that. I still give that away if you chip in for a few bucks for materials and, and handling. If you're in my coaching program, I would check out module four, which is the interviewing module and all the supplemental videos there as well about how to interview well. And then when it comes to salary negotiation, the premium members, you got the details on, on salary negotiation. You got loads of assets there. If you're in, if you're using my free stuff, check the salary playlist, salary negotiation playlist on my YouTube channel. But but for people like Michael, what's happening a lot, and because I'm doing this in a lot of one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions as well, almost daily, I have somebody in, who, who looks like Michael who says, hey, I, 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 I got reconnected, or I, I, I did a cold boss hunting thing, I'm now in negotiating with an organization, they hurried me through the process, but I'm not really sure if, if what they're presenting me is, is, is all buttoned up, if they've really thought this through. So what I want to say to you is a couple things. Number one, it's okay to slow the process down to make sure that you're doing your homework and they're doing their homework. If you are in my coaching program, last month I gave you the exact salary negotiation technique, how to slow it down, what to pull together, what to present to the employer, so you have access to that. But if, if you don't have access to that material, just make sure that you're, you're taking a pause. I would make an assumption make an assumption that whatever the offer is it's not enough it's probably a lower than what lower than what they'll go offer okay now generally speaking usually the first offer from an employer is not their final and best not usually sometimes okay but make the assumption that there's a lot more room there to grow you might be you might be wrong, but it's better you're better off going my way than your way if you want to make the assumption that that's a really good offer. I would be very surprised if any initial offers these days are best and final. Okay? And and believe me, you need to make the argument number 3 about for Michael why you're worth more. So you can't just say I want more because of my experience and my education. You need to actually make a detailed argument and connect the dots for the employer about how what you do is going to impact them. Just because you're educated, you do not get paid more from me or most employers just because you have an education or degree. It doesn't it I don't I don't count that as anything. I count actual work experience that's what you get credit for you get credit for showing me what you're going to be able to do and the impact that it's going to have in my organization you get credit for persuasion and being able to connect the dots for me okay and you get credit for making a plausible argument where you're going to need to convince me that what you're saying is true it has nothing to do with your education okay just because you have education doesn't mean you actually know how to do what i need you to do Okay, there's a huge difference there. So I don't want you to overemphasize education. I want you to really stress your work experience. All right, and then I do want you to make the counter offer. But the other thing that I want you to do is employers are more now than ever giving extras that I've never seen before. I just got, let's loop back to what I was saying early. I could not, I cannot believe that virtually every restaurant that I go into, they're giving sign-on bonuses to servers. Okay, it's, it's an indication of what's happening in this world. God bless them. I would go and I would sign up and I would take the $700 or $900 that they're going to give you for signing up and, uh, and becoming a server in their restaurant. But this is what organizations are doing. Amazon's giving bonuses. Other organizations that never gave bonuses to frontline workers are doing that now. So this is a microcosm of what's actually happening. So extra moving expenses. Uh, 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 a delayed move for somebody like like Michael if that's going to 
uh, if that's actually going to, to, to be the case that he's going to need to move. So I, I want to make sure that you're recognizing employers will bend over backwards because they're, you got them over a barrel right now. And so, so just, I, I want you to make sure that you're doing that. So, so, so make sure that you're slowing it down. Make sure you're assuming that there's more room to negotiate. You've got to make a, a plausible argument that you are worth more. It's not that you're educated or this and that. And it's great that you have experience, but experience to me does not guarantee that you're going to be able to do it in my environment. So when you're making an argument about why you want more, you need to show me why how my life is going to change as a result of you being here. Okay, when I sell you a product, when you buy something from a store, it is about your transformation, not what you bring to me. Okay, so it's about the result you're, you're expecting when you fork over the dollars. It's about the results the employer is expecting. When they fork over the dollars, you need to paint a crystal clear picture of, of, of you and how that's going to happen for them. So that, that's a big deal. And then make sure that, that you are making that argument. You are asking for more, but you're also asking for some extras or other things that, that should go along with with uh, with compensation that you might not otherwise have pressed for in a different type of environment. And if you want more on that last point, I would also check out a video I put out not too long ago on uh, on your financial worth. There's a checklist and some other stuff. I don't I can't remember what the dang title of the video is, but if you search my channel for financial, it was within the last month or so I released a video on that. But I, I would make sure that you're doing that. This is what is happening in the market right now. So I hope, I hope you guys you know, take, take that to heart. I hope you recognize that as you're searching. But if you're not getting the results you want, if you're not getting the interviews that you want, and if you're not getting over the goal line, there are, right, there are intermediary steps that you have to do correctly. Uh, even though employers are a bit more desperate to hire you than, than, than they have been, you know, let's say, sometime last year, uh, you still need to be reaching out to the right people. You still need to be consistent with your sending out of your messages and your networking and your boss hunting and all that other good stuff. And then when you get in the interviews, you still gotta you still gotta win the job. You got other people competing with you, but you still gotta make the case for why you're worth what you're worth. And you do that through your interview stories and you do that through your salary counteroffers. All right, so I just I wanted to open up the show with that because I just I think I think you needed to hear it. I think you needed to see it that way. Uh, you know, I'm I'm sure you've got a lot of other trainers out there telling you that everybody's resigning and all that good stuff. But you know, this is this is what this can mean for you. So take that out there, go get them. And uh, if you're here with me live, we'll go to the Q and A. If uh, if you're watching this on the recording, I will see you next week. <laughs>